We currently find ourselves bang in the middle of summer and I know that many photographers, specifically landscape photographers, really struggle with this time of year. The really early sunrises can be difficult to get up for, the really late sunsets can be difficult to stay up for and the lack of changeable dramatic weather during the day can result in not very many interesting dramatic atmospheric images. So it's understandable why a lot of landscape photographers struggle at this time of year. I personally love it because I love being out there at stupid o'clock in the morning while everybody else is still in bed and having locations completely to myself. I also love being out late at night and sitting on the beach and watching the sunset. I just find it to be such an awe-inspiring experience. And during the day with a nice warm settled weather it can just be nice to get out and explore, to scout locations and to attempt photography when the conditions do play in your favour. As I say, for many people this time of year is really, really difficult and I think for this past year that's been very heightened for many of us with everything that's been going on in the world and many of us have been dabbling in different styles of photography. I'm sure many of you will remember last summer during our first lockdown I spent a lot of time doing macro photography in my garden which is something that I'd never done before and then during the last lockdown I spent quite a lot of time walking around the fields around my home getting abstract style images of ice within the frozen puddles. It's another style of photography that I've been doing since the start of this year that I've yet to speak about and that is ICM and that is what I'm going to be talking about today. Now I first became aware of ICM photography a few years ago now when Thomas Heaton released a video where he went out with a photographer that does ICM regularly to try it for himself and I remember watching that video back then and thinking that style of photography is not for me. I mean the whole concept of ICM photography is that you are intentionally moving your camera around. So when we start photography, we always hear people going on about ensuring your shutter speed is fast enough in order to stop your images being bloody. And I think as photographers, we always have that in our, in our minds, this idea of ensuring our settings are a certain way so that our images are pin sharp. But the creative element of ICM means that that is not what you want. You want your images to be bloody, you want your images to be in motion and it's actually, as the last few years have gone on, I've come to realise that it's a very creative genre of photography and of course it's not for everybody. As I mentioned, when I saw this video a few years ago I thought I really don't like that. That is not for me. It's creative but I just didn't really get it. Whereas now that I have evolved quite a lot creatively and I'm always looking for different ways to express my creativity and different ways to get images that are maybe a little bit more unique, I've opened my mind up now to ICM and it's something that I began to do about three months ago now because I've now got this concept in my mind where I'm wanting to create photographs that are different and that are unique and that are unusual. And with your stereotypical landscape photography, the best way to get unique and unusual images is to capture the light when it's at its optimum. So to capture incredible misty photographs, to capture incredible golden sunsets and sunrises, to capture stormy clouds and rainbows, and to be able to frame that within the landscape in order to create a captivating photograph. But as many of you will know, getting those conditions is incredibly rare. So one thing I love about ICM photography is that you can go literally anywhere. Your garden, the most amazing location in the world, a field, up a mountain, to the seaside, it doesn't matter. You can be anywhere and even in the most boring location on planet Earth and you can still get interesting and unique images and you can get it in all light conditions. And the main thing I love about ICM photography is that every image is completely different and nobody will ever be able to completely replicate the photographs that you get. So that's why I've been dabbling in this recently and I've been finding the experience so awe-inspiring. And right now I'm going to share with you some of the images that I've taken over the last few months using this technique. I'm still learning, so these images aren't the best in the world, but this is the beginning of my ICM process, something that I'm probably going to keep up and keep doing. 
and uh, yeah, these are the first sort of images that I've been managing to capture. those images are quite a bit different to my usual style of photography but I thoroughly enjoyed shooting them because they were all taken on days and in locations which were boring where the light was boring or where the location I was in wasn't very awe-inspiring and interesting for normal landscape photography and I was able to utilize what was on show to me to create images that I would never have been able to get anything interesting out of if I wasn't doing something like ICM or macro potentially if I'd have my macro lens with me it's just a completely different genre of photography so this morning I've come to this tiny little rookery woodland near my home and basically it's about 10, half past 10 in the morning in the middle of the summer. It's one of these days it's quite overcast and disinteresting with the occasional break in the clouds coming through. But given the time of day and the weather conditions, as you can see, there's no interesting mist, the leaves aren't that aren't wet so you've not got that nice contrast and saturation it's just a very stereotypical sort of woodland scene it'd be a great place to do macro photography but that's not what I'm doing today I'm on the lookout for some ICM shots so without further ado let's get cracking and see what I can capture <music> subject that I'm shooting today is this tree here where we've got this lovely bark that's still on half of it. A lot of it's been stripped off unfortunately so the tree's probably going to die but we've got this lovely strip of bark here and what I'm doing is I'm moving my camera around in different ways to try and create different feels to this this photograph that I'm creating. So what I find is that ICM works best when you're somewhere that you've got quite low light. So somewhere like a woodland is really good because generally speaking, woodland doesn't have much as much light in it as an open space does. So you, it allows you to be able to use longer shutter speeds. And what I find is anything from sort of half a second up to one and a half seconds, for me personally, seems to work really well. And when I approach a subject like this, I look at the tones and the textures that are within it. So this bark, for instance, it's got these lovely lines within it. So I began when I was taking my initial images of this by moving the camera up and down like this to try and work in sync with the lines of the bark that are tracking up the tree. And I then decided to mix it up a little bit and start wiggling my camera from side to side to try and get like a illusion effect within it. And by choosing different motions of the camera to do that kind of stuff, it allows you to create different effects. So what I'll do now is I'll show you an image that I was taking moving the camera up and down, and then an image that was taken by shifting the camera in circular motions, so that you can see that the different effects that, that can have when photographing a subject like this in ICM.
Now bark, in the last example, is actually quite an interesting subject. You know, when you start looking deeply at bark, you can see a lot of shapes and textures within it and patterns. And when you get really creative with your camera, using a mixture of zoomed in shots and macro shots and ICM, anything really, you can come away with some interesting photographs and get some really nice abstract shots of bark as well. So what I thought would actually be quite exciting to do is to get as boring as boring can go in terms of subject matter and photograph the grass. Now again, if you're doing something like macro photography or you've got an insect on the grass, for instance, it can make an interesting photograph. But generally speaking, grass on its own is quite a boring subject. So I thought I'd go right back down today to one of the most boring subject matters you can possibly find in a woodland, looking at the ground and doing some ICM on the grass. And we'll see if I can turn a very boring, me mediocre subject into something that could potentially be quite beautiful and even framed on a wall. video that I find anything from half a second up to one and a half seconds works well for ICM but what I've just been discovering when I've been shooting this grass is that actually much quicker shutter speeds can make a better result so if you're wanting a really washed out almost watercolor abstract image then the longer your shutter speed is within that kind of range the more sort of watercolory washed out effect you get but if you just want that slight movement and you still want some definition in the shapes and whatnot a much faster shutter speed can work just as well and you'll see in some of those images i just showed you actually that some of the grass shots were taken at about i think it was about a third or a quarter of a second um and it was giving me much better results because i was still able to get some of the definition within the, the blades of grass so it's all about messing around with your settings and as I was saying this is still very new to me and I've got so much more to learn in terms of ICM but I wanted to share this video with you today because it's something that I've been enjoying dabbling in over the last few months and that I've been finding really awe-inspiring to be able to come out at any time of the day to go to any location and to come home with images that I'm reasonably happy with and that almost in, in many ways they're a work of art of course, photography is an art form, but there's often, when you do something a bit more unique and unusual and a bit more abstract, there's a much more creative artistic element to it, which I think is why I'm really enjoying ICM, because I'm expanding a lot personally, creatively. So being able to pursue that and put that into my photography, I'm finding really, really exciting. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. I hope this has given you some ideas of something to get out and potentially do in your own photography work to do something a little bit different to um, express your creativity differently ICM isn't for everybody um, but it's a different creative outlet and a way that you can get good images in less than satisfying weather and light conditions so yeah thank you for watching and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time